Good morning, everybody. Um, in general, we're doing musical mornings um, at 8 a.m., but I had some great questions in yesterday's episode, so I decided to devote today's live stream to a couple specific questions. Now, sometimes you guys ask me questions during musical mornings, and it's not within the format of that series to really go over um, the in-depth answer to those questions, but I can always make another video for it. So an, an awesome guy that drops in, um, that drops in just about every day to, to my live streams um, is Probin, and he asked, how do you know about voicings? And he's asked me a uh, this a couple times. So I decided to make a video about chord voicings what are they? And then we're also going to go into depth on how to look at the intervals inside of voicings. We're going to be using Fernando Soar's Opus 60 number 13, which I just did a lesson video uh, two days ago on my channel. So if you want to learn this piece too, um, definitely do that. But we're going to be looking into the building blocks of this piece. Of course, ask your questions and I will take care of them either as we go or at the end here. So first off, I want to differentiate between, good morning Derek, good morning. What is a chord and what is a voicing, okay? So chords and voicings are really not in the same category. So you can think of a chord as a noun, right? So a dog is a noun, a book is a noun. A chord is a thing. And a voicing is an attribute to that thing, right? So a dog can be big or small. Now the voicing is, is how the, the chord is actually constructed using what are called intervals. And we're gonna be looking at intervals in this lesson, but I want you to understand that voicing is really just referring to how you're constructing the chord. So for example, the C major chord is spelled C, E, G, right? So if I wanted to experiment with the voicings of a C major chord, um, good morning, Thurston. Good morning. I would take a look at how I'm going to arrange C, E, G. So we could just put it on the fretboard C, E, G. So it'd be C, E, open G, third, second, and open, right? But we, we might want to use a different, what's called voicing. So that would be maybe C, G, and open E. So that's a different way to play a C major chord. Or maybe we wanted to, to get even a little bit more in depth with the voicing and, and do C and then E, G like this, right? So we have C, E, G, right? Or maybe even, why don't we move that C up here? Then we have C, E, G still. Or we could even go um, G, C, E, right? And, you know, why stop there? Why not go to E, G, C? And as you can see, I'm actually taking the notes that belong to the same chord and I'm moving them around on my fretboard. Now, when you're looking at how chords are voiced, you are actually going to be looking at what are called intervals. Like, what are the intervals inside of the chord? So, for example, if we have a C, E, G like this, well, that's a root, third, fifth. So we have from the root, a third, and a fifth. Now, I'm going to get into how exactly to identify those intervals here in a moment but you can you can look at the fact that all right well that's not the same as having ecg which is a sixth and a tenth right so <clears throat> let's take a look at how to like what are these intervals and how can we identify them and again i'm going to be using one of the the lessons that i did recently opus 60 number 13 by fernando soar by the way i'm going to be putting up probably every single Fernando Soar etude that he ever wrote eventually on this channel. So let me silence my phone here. Silly me. Okay. So um, I have on the screen a C major scale diagram. Um, let me go ahead and lift up my camera just a little bit, get it out of my face. So we have C major here. You can see the chromatic scale and also the C major scale notes circled. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at the two important things inside of an interval. And if you guys recall, I hope you've seen my hour-long music theory video, it, an interval really describes two things. First off, how far apart are the notes in the alphabet? And then how far are they like, in a more exact manner? 
So for example, we have the interval of a sixth. Well, that could be a major or a minor sixth. So what is going on there? So the six means that we are six letters forward in the alphabet. So if we were to try and um, count that up, I'm trying to get a little innovative here with live streaming, guys. So if we went C and we said, all right, we're going to go six letters forward in the alphabet. So we have one, and then D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five, and A is six. Right? So this is a major six. Now, the major is telling us how many whole and half steps are in there, right? So if we counted half whole steps, let's just count whole steps. So C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, F to F sharp is a whole step, um, G to G sharp is a whole step, and then we have A, another half step. So that's four and a half steps for a major sixth. Now, if we wanted another kind of interval, and we're going to take a look um, at this stuff here, here in just a second, a minor sixth, we would actually need A flat. Now on the screen here, it says G sharp, but with it, we can think of this as A flat. So A is actually six letters forward in the alphabet. And then the major is telling us, well, is it four and a half steps or is it four steps? Um, so C to A is a major sixth and C to A flat is a minor sixth. And if you, if you think about that on the fretboard, so if we went four and a half steps forward from our C here, remember each fret is a half step, we have C, one, two, three, four, and a half, that's A. And if we went four steps, that would be a minor sixth, that would be the A flat. our A flat. Now, of course, we're not playing all our intervals just on one string, right? We're, we're playing the guitar, so we can cross strings. So that same C to A here, I can find here as C and A. And those are the two same pitches. Prabhan, good morning. I'm actually answering your question this morning. So uh, this video is dedicated to you, buddy. All right, so we have C to A, which would be a major sixth, and C to A flat, which would be a minor six, right? So we've taken that, that space that we've covered on the fingerboard here, and we've actually decided to start crossing strings, right? So let's talk about how we can use this stuff to figure out um, intervals inside of the pieces that we're playing. And again, like I said, I want to use Opus 60, uh, number 13 by Fernando Sor, because it's just you know, I recently did a video on it. I love Fernando Sor's music, and his music is all about the voicing. Um, so if we look at the very first part there, let me get a circle on the screen here. Um, I'm experimenting with having little graphics I, I can personally mess around with live. However, I am new at it, so um, you guys just bear with me when I'm moving circles around. So here's our first little bit here, right? So the three notes that we have here are C, G, and E, right? Um, let me just rearrange this real quick. C, G, and E. So this is our C major chord. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and circle um, our C, G, and E. So our C here is built on the one, and then our G here. Bear with me, guys. Or sorry, our E here, and then our G right here. So let's let's take a look at the voicings here. All right. So first off, let's see what is C to G. Well, remember, first we need to know how far forward is it in the alphabet. So we have one letter forward to D, two letters forward to E four letters forward to F, and five letters forward to G. And this is what's called a perfect fifth. A perfect fifth is three and a half steps, right? Um, now, our G up to E is really kind of the question we're looking at here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the C because what this piece does is it moves around in what are called sixths. So our G up to E, you'll see, and I'll prove to you here in just a moment, is a sixth. And then the, so are the next notes. These are all sixths until we get around here, um, which will be our what are called thirds. And I'll explain that as we go. So G to E. Well, what we need to do is we need to count forward from G. And as we go around, we're going to um, be continuing and kind of looping through. So we start with G here. 
Then we have A for the second note forward. Then we have B for the third note forward, C for the fourth, D for the fifth, and E for the sixth. So as you can see, it's actually a sixth. Now, G to E, how many, like how many whole steps? If you remember, it's a major sixth, it'll be four and a half. If it's a minor sixth, it's gonna be four. Well, let's, let's count our, our half steps. So we have G, A is a whole step, B is a whole step, then C is a half step, so that's two and a half, D three and a half, and then E four and a half. So we have a major sixth here, which is our open G and E, right? Um, and if we were to actually look at this on the fretboard, right, and the screen might get a little busy here. This is the first time I've experimented with live graphics. Um, so our E to G, we have E fifth fret of the B, or you could just do, um, sorry, let's do G to E, my bad. G, open G. And the, the E you're going to find all the way up here, right? We're going to have an E all the way up on the ninth fret. So if you counted, so that'd be open G, and then two frets forward would be your first whole step, right? That's A. We're looking for four and a half steps here. Another whole step forward, two frets. B brings you to the fourth fret. Then another half step will bring you to C. That's two and a half. And we're going to go up to the seventh fret for D. That's three and a half. And then the ninth fret for E, which is four and a half. That's our major six. But of course, we're playing the guitar, so we want to play these so that we don't have to go up the same string, right? So that brings us to our open E and G. So next, you'll see that um, our, our two notes move up to A and F, right? So let's take a look at, at what that means. First off, I'm going to circle A here, and then I'm going to circle F. And remember, we need to move forward in the alphabet. So I'm going to prove to you that this is a sixth. Um, this is actually a different kind of sixth than the last one, though. So we have A, one forward to B, two forward to C. Or sorry, so A, B is the two, C is the three, D is the four, E is the five, and F is the six. Now let's count how many steps this is, right? So is this, a, is this four and a half or is this four? Well, you're gonna find that this one's four. So we have A, whole step to B, right? Half step to C, that's a step and a half. Whole step to D, two and a half steps. Whole step to E, three and a half steps. And another half step to F. So that's four. So this is a sixth, but it's not quite as big as the last sixth that we had. So this one actually is a minor sixth. And we're gonna get that um, as this, but you'll see they're both sixths. So the voicings here are the sixths. And we're, we're actually moving in what are called parallel sixths. So as um, this note moves, as say the A moves, and it's going to go back to G, well then this one moves right after it down to the E. And we have a sixth going, right? If we're counting forward from here, which is the root. Um, so next we have the G and the E here, which is another sixth of the scale, right? And after that we have F and D. So let's, let's figure out what kind of sixth we have here. So we have our F and our D. And of course we're going to say F is the root, so we're going to count forward from F. So let's take, bring the arrow over here to the root. Let's see how many letters forward we have. So we have F, G is the 2, A is the 3, B is the 4, C is the five, and D is the sixth. So yes, we have another sixth, but is this a major or a minor sixth? I'm gonna give you guys a few moments to tell me. So type it down in the chat. What are we dealing with here? A major sixth, a minor sixth, what kind of sixth do we have from F up to D? Remember, major is four and a half steps, and minor is four steps. So I'm gonna give you guys just a few moments to, to answer that down in the chat while I have that question open, and I hope to see some answers pouring in here in a second, um, I just want to give a quick shout out. Uh, I'm now taking orders for my books on my online shop, so musicandguitarlessons.shop. You guys can order Music Theory in One Lesson if you really want a great reference book for all this music theory stuff. I've also got my reading music book and the Musical Mornings Workbook Volume 1. I'm going to be writing music and learnings in 20 episodes at a time, basically, and sending out a workbook. And of course, if you're a member of the dojo, then you can 
uh, sign up for the $25 a month membership and you'll get a free book in the mail every month because I will be putting at least one book out every month. All right. Awana says major. Good job, Awana. Very, very good. Um, this is a major six. And so if we look at what's coming up next, we have E and C. And guys, if you guys are the ones to type in the, the answer and get it correct, I'm going to give you a shout out here on the video. Um, so be sure to be the first one to send in your answer. So we have E. E here and then C there and as you can see they're all moving parallel so this one is another six but let's just prove it to ourselves so E F is the two G is the three A is the four B is the five and C is the six so I'm gonna ask you guys again what kind of six is this E up to C what kind of six do we have here um, and I'm going to go ahead and blurt out the answer because I don't want to do too much advertising on my channel. Of course, you guys should listen to my advertisements and, and buy my stuff so that I can support myself and keep putting these videos out. This one is a minor sixth. So that means we're four steps forward. So if we do E to F is our first half step, then F to G brings us to a step and a half. G to A is two and a half steps. A to B is three and a half. And of course, B to C brings us to our last four steps. Um, so we have a minor sixth here. Next, we're moving to D to B, which is another sixth, right? This one is actually a, uh, a, a major sixth. We have four and a half steps. So I want to keep, keep moving forward because you guys have seen these sixths. And we run into where a spot here where the voicing actually changes, right? So he's doing parallel sixth all the way up to here. And then he switches to parallel thirds for a moment. So let's let's examine the parallel thirds and see the difference between major and minor thirds. By the end of this lesson, you're going to be pretty good at major and minor thirds. Um, also, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot of this kind of stuff. And I don't know if anybody else is doing live graphics like this. I think I might be the first one. Okay, guys. So we're looking at our G to B. First off, let's prove that is, it is in fact a third, okay? And then I'll tell you the difference between major and minor thirds. So G, A is the two, B is the three. Now a major third has two steps, right? Two whole steps, and a minor third is a half a step smaller. Minor is always a half a step smaller. So that's a step and a half. And if you look, G to A is our first whole step, then A to B is our second whole step. So that's two steps. Now F to A, this is another kind of third, right? So we get F, we move down to F, and then we're also going to be moving down to A. This one, let's just prove it. F, G is the two, A is the three, and then we have two whole steps in between. Um, next we have A and C. So I'm going to ask you guys again what kind of interval we have here. Of course it's a third, A, B is the two, C is the three, but is this major or minor? So let me know down in the chat. Um, whoever gets it right first, if somebody gets it right, of course, is going to get a little shout out here on the video. Um, and I'm going to talk about my website for just one last moment. Um, so in my dojo membership area, you guys can get access to all my PDFs to download. Um, this is extremely helpful. And it also gives you access to study with me personally if you guys have any interest in taking Skype lessons. So let's get those questions in. A to C, is this a major or a minor third? Let me know. I'm going to give you, Awana got it correct again. It's minor. So did Sonny. So did Larry. Good job, guys. Minor third here. This is a minor third. Um, so as you can see, just about every piece of music has just an absolute trevor, tre, uh, treasure trove of music theory that you can pull out of it. And in fact, something that I might do for you guys here shortly, I, I have um, a, a, a looping system I like to play with here, and I have an electric cello, so I may actually record this for two cellos so that you guys can see what the difference is when we're talking about voices moving in and out of each other. So I'm going to give you guys one last call for questions. Um, We've taken a look at some intervals, made some sense between chords and voicings. Um, let me know how you liked this episode. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun to have these live graphics. I didn't know this was possible until last night I thought of the idea. 
I love when ideas strike me. Um, so I am now able to do live graphics. It looks pretty successful to me. Guys, doesn't look like there's any questions coming in. So just one last thing, subscribe to the channel, share all this stuff. All this stuff is gonna continue to be free for the world at large. If you wanna put in a little extra, um, go ahead and buy my books and join the dojo. Uh, Mr. Larry actually bought a book this morning, so that'll be in the mail for you very, very soon, my friend. Um, guys, happy practice. I am out for the day.